Kingsgate Media is proud to present Seed, the series, adapted for radio as an audio drama. Episode 1, The Agartha Mission. Written by Rob Skiba and Sharon K. Gilbert. Directed and produced by Rob Skiba. Narrated by Rick Hummer. Time. It impatiently ticks entirely too quickly into the past. Millennia birthed from centuries. Centuries, the product of decades. Decades from years, years from months, months from weeks, and weeks from days. Lately, the days have been passing like hours and the hours like minutes. But the funny thing is, it's the seemingly insignificant seconds that keep pushing it all farther and farther back until all that remains is history. Maybe it's just a big circle. A game that repeats itself over and over again in an endless loop. Or perhaps we're the pawns in some kind of cosmic chess match with angels and demons interfering in the affairs of man. Then again, what if none of this is real? What if it's all just an illusion? A hologram? I don't know. But somehow, I can't help believing that the keys to our future lie buried in the past. A past where the truth may be revealed in time, will be no more. My name is Captain Zach Randall. I began to feel this way just before the Agartha mission. In fact, that was my last journal entry before everything in my life would be changed forever. You see, in December of 2002, my special operations unit was sent on a covert mission to Iraq. We were told we were looking for weapons of mass destruction. Well, on the night of Christmas Eve, we found one. This is the story of that event. High above the Earth, the Ouroboros spy satellite begins to relay imagery and telemetry data down to a high-tech, covert military command center. This is the headquarters of the Supernatural and Extraterrestrial Exploration and Defense Division of the United States Special Forces, also simply known as the SEED Project. It was the brainchild of Major General Victor Caritas. Only a handful of elite international bankers, General Caritas, a few other three and four star generals at the Pentagon, and of course, those directly under their command have any knowledge of what really goes on in this place. Although there are plans for expansion, currently, the project consists of only three six-man squads. Today, General Caritas enters the Seed Tactical Operations Center, eager for an update on the status of two of those squads. Shit, rep. We're receiving satellite telemetry now, General Caritas. Excellent. Is Argartha on site? Not yet, sir. Relaying the information to them now. Meanwhile, two SUVs make their way across the desert sand 160 kilometers southeast of Baghdad. Inside the lead vehicle, six men are wearing civilian clothes. But these are no civilians. They are the best of America's elite special forces, and one of two squads operating under the code name, Agartha. Staff Sergeant Jakes, call sign Red, is driving. Staff Sergeant Reynolds, call sign Wishbone, rides in the passenger seat, navigating as he monitors incoming satellite data on a handheld device. Behind them sits the Agartha team's commanding officer, Captain Zach Randall, call sign Phoenix, and his NCOIC. Master Sergeant Calhoun, call sign, Chef. At the rear of the vehicle are Sergeant First Class Pierce, call sign, Dino, and the newest and youngest member of the team, Sergeant Martinez, call sign, Prince. While each of these men are exceptionally skilled and well-trained combat soldiers, they all have certain areas of expertise specifically related 
to the Agartha mission objective. They were about to enter into the very cradle of human civilization, and General Caritas wanted to be certain they understood that. For he knows, this desert holds many ancient secrets. One of which he shared with Captain Randall just prior to deployment. Thus, Zack is the only one on the Agartha team who knows the real objective of this mission. As the bright moonlight shines through the window and he contemplates what may lie ahead, Zack pulls a small photograph out of his pocket. The image of his beautiful fiance, Jessica Kane, brings a smile to his face. Looking over his shoulder, Martinez catches a glimpse. Is that your girl, Cap? Yeah. Chased her since high school. We're getting married next month. Congratulations! You're a lucky man, sir. Yes, I am. How we doing, Wishbone? We gonna make that mark sometime tonight or what? Yes, sir. We're close. Just waiting on confirmation from Olympus. Hey, Chef. Speaking of Wishbone, you think you could cook us up another turkey dinner for Christmas this year? Sure, you can get us one. Well, maybe Princess Louise here can call home and place an order for us. What do you say, sweetheart? Think you can handle that? The call sign's Prince. And that's Louis, Sarge. You need me to spell it out for you? <laughs> you don't even want to go there, kid. Whoa, 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 slow down. What do you got, Wish? I think this is it, sir. Ouroboros telemetry is coming in now. Yep, whole area just lit up like Vegas. All right, pull over, Red. Lights out. Yes, sir. Bravo team, this is it. Lights out. Stand by for further instructions, over. Copy that, Alpha. Agartha, Olympus, over. And there it is. Olympus, Agartha. Go ahead, over. The telemetry tells us you're on site. Confirm, over. I got it. Mars, this is Phoenix. We're where we're supposed to be, but there's nothing here. We're about to recon, over. Proceed. Switch to visual. I want to see what's going on over there. Roger that. All right, time to put on our game faces, boys. Olympus, Agartha, eyes on. Please confirm, over. 2020. Proceed as planned. Roger. Out. You heard the man. Let's roll. Ooh -ah. Ooh -ah. Both Alpha and Bravo teams exit their vehicles. As the men gather their gear, Lieutenant Knight approaches his commanding officer and longtime friend. Hey, Phoenix. We heard the last transmission. My men are ready. Good. We'll scope out the cliff. You take the perimeter. But keep it tight. We may need to make a quick getaway. Copy that. Okay, Bravo team. Tight perimeter, MVGs. I don't want anything getting past us. One, eyes north, two south, three east, four west. Five, you take the high ground. I've got eyes on Alpha. Let's move. All right, right, eighteen. Call signs only and dispense with the formalities. Wishbone, take point. Show us the way to the casino. All right, right this way, gentlemen. As Zack and his men begin to recon the area, it isn't long before Sergeant Reynolds' scanning device begins to chirp. What have you got, Wish? Well, uh, it, it's saying we're here. This is the objective. I don't see anything except this cliff. Uh, that's because it's on the inside. On the inside? Yeah. I mean, according to this, there's a, like a deep... I don't know, tunnel on the other side of this cliff face. All right, Dino, you're up. Make it count. Always do. I'll cover you. Everyone else, fall back behind that ridge. Pierce quickly sets the charges. Then he and Zack join the others behind the safety of a nearby ridge. Zack gives the go-ahead signal, and Pierce activates the charges, causing an explosion that is heard all across the shallow valley. Not far away, the sound jolts the Bedouin awake. And so it begins. Lieutenant Knight and his men tighten their grip on their weapons. They begin to scan for anyone who may have become aware of their presence. Stay sharp, boys. Meanwhile, Zack and his men quickly rush to the newly exposed tunnel entrance. Wow, I in the sky sure pegged this one. You ain't kidding. Olympus, Agartha, you getting this? Over. Roger, Phoenix. Proceed with extreme caution. 
Our Bars is picking up some strange energy readings. Over. You getting it? Yeah. There's some serious energy spikes coming from uh, deep inside. Wait, what do you mean, energy spikes? Check it out. You see this right here? It's spanning all electromagnetic spectrums, hopping from you know, frequency to frequency. I've never seen anything like it. All right. Uh, Roger, Olympus. We're going in. As they enter the tunnel, Martinez and Jakes are the first to notice a terribly foul stench. Oh, man. Oh, my God. What the hell is that smell? Over here. Pierce shines his weapon-mounted flashlight down, revealing dozens of corpses. Well, they're not human, I can tell you that. Looks like they're all goats. My god. There are hundreds of them. What's with the crimson ribbon tied around their horns? This must be the site of some ancient ritual sacrifice. Elsewhere, General Caritas watches the computer monitors with extreme interest. He smiles as if he's found what he's looking for. Meanwhile, back inside the tunnel, Zack covers his face with his scarf as he kneels to inspect the ribbon-tied horns of the goat skulls. Oh, man, I don't know, guys. This is some serious bad mojo. Easy, Prince. Check the superstition at the door. Everyone mask up, we're going in. The soldiers don their protective masks in preparation to continue deeper into the unknown. Oh, you want me to call your mommy noob? Keep laughing it up, funny boy. But you don't know what I know. I know you're a little- At ease, ladies. I got something, Phoenix. If I'm reading this right, the Grand Casino's just ahead, about 35 meters. Lead the way. The men proceed through dense cobwebs until they eventually come before a large stone wall which has strange writings etched all over it. Looks like some of the same writing we saw in Damascus. Yeah. Zack reaches out to touch the wall, but his touch is met with a severe electrical shock. Ah, son of a bitch! Are you okay? <clears throat> yeah. About crap my pants, though. <sighs> Olympus, Agartha, are you getting this? Over. Repeat, Olympus, Agartha, do you read? Ah! Back at the command center, all of the monitors are filled with static. What's happening? Sir, the signal's being jammed by some sort of electromagnetic interference. Interference? From where? It appears to be emanating from below the surface, General. Sir, I've, I've lost the signal. Get it back. I'm sorry, General. It's gone. Damn it! Back inside the tunnel. Zack tries desperately to reach them on the long-range radio. Mars, this is Phoenix. Did you receive last transmission? Please advise, over. Mars, this is Phoenix. Looks like we're on our own. Mm, great. Now what? Nothing's changed. We do what we came here to do. Dino, let's get some shape charges on this thing. On it. And if the WMDs are behind this thing? Yeah, then we'll find out soon enough, won't we? Careful, Dino. We don't want to collapse the tunnel. And watch yourself, this thing packs one hell of a shot. You read my mind. Pierce puts on some rubber gloves and cautiously tests to see if he can safely touch the strange wall. Once satisfied that he can, he carefully places shape charges in strategic locations all along its edges. That should do it. All right, fall back to the entrance. The men all exit the tunnel, taking cover nearby. Zack nods to Pierce, who nods back, then hits the detonation button. Hearing the muted explosion, Lieutenant Knight looks back toward the hillside. When he turns back around, he is startled by the sight of the Bedouin standing right in front of him. Sleep well, my friend. The old man calmly flicks his index finger down, and instantly, the lieutenant falls to the ground, unconscious. Back at the tunnel entrance, Staff Sergeant Jakes takes chemical and radiation readings before the team proceeds back inside. All clear, sir. All right. But stay masked. We don't want... 
blast of cold air bursts from deep inside the tunnel, accompanied by the sound of something that can only be described as pure evil emerging from within the darkness. To be continued in Seed, Episode 2, The Cave. You've been listening to Kingsgate Media's audio drama adaptation of Seed the Series. This episode featured the voices of Shane Land, Nikki Hedgemar, Robert Skiba Sr., David Palais, Arturo Portillo, Preston Hare, Rick Hummer, Lance Russell, Israel Palais, Marty Azell, and Charles Duran. With narration by Rick Hummer. Original music for this broadcast was provided by Scott Rockenfield, John Mason, and Steve Voss. With additional music licensed from Digital Juice, Video Copilot, and GMP Music. Original sound effects by Rob Skiba and Paul Villeneuve. With additional sound effects licensed from Digital Juice, Video Copilot, GMP Music, and SoundDogs.com. Sound engineering and final edit by Rob Skiba at the Kingsgate Media Studio in Addison, Texas. For more information on this and future episodes, please visit SeedTheSeries.com. <laughs>